Hello, welcome to today's lesson on section 7.5. If you read our agenda carefully, you'll see that I didn't have a chance to make a worksheet uh, simply because I'm heading out to the Fortnite game in about two to three hours. So um, we'll just do this on this uh, template here. But it's not really too much writing or any big word problems or anything like that. So hopefully I'll keep this video short so you guys have the rest of the weekend to enjoy other stuff. So let's we'll start with section 7.5. <clears throat> And uh, let's actually change the color up. In the spirit of the 49ers, we're going to go all red. And that's weird. My red is actually orange. So let's see if I can change the colors up. So you can make that thicker. Oh, there we go. Okay, I think we found a winner here. All right. Okay, so sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, section 7.5 Properties of Logarithms. Now, this is actually a very crucial section. If you want to be successful on 7.6, which we're going to do later this week. That's solving equations, as well as um, that's what seven point seven is about. Eh, not so much for seven point seven, but definitely for seven point six. And even um, when I've taught pre-calculus and calculus, students who don't really learn this section very well tend to struggle in those classes. And um, a lot of my students who do well understand properties of logarithms really well. So. It's actually a glaring difference between successful and not successful math students in later classes if they don't learn this well. So really try to um, take careful notes here and understand this and ask questions when I see you on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week because this will play, again, a crucial role later in this chapter and also in your later math classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the properties by self-discovery. So, let's say I gave you three log values. And here's what I give you. I tell you what log 2 is what log 3 is, and what log 4 is. And by the way, these are all common logs. If anyone's curious, because um, I don't put the base, so you assume the base is 10. So if I were to give this to you, or if you look up in your calculator, 0 0.301, 0 0.477, one point six oh two. Find the following log six, log sixteen, and log of one point five. So some of you would think, well how do I do this? You know, do you have to be the human calculator to figure this out? Well, 
I know that log 6 equals 0.778. And uh, I know there's no way of... Sorry, oops. Let me rewrite that. Log 6 equals 0.778. Uh, there's no way of verifying this because obviously you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm not using the calculator. But I'm not a human calculator either. Uh, it's not like I just knew in my head that, you know, okay, log 6 equals this. I'm actually using the values I was given. Um, before I show you how I did that, I'm going to what log 16 equals. Log 16, I know equals 1.204. Again, I'm not the human calculator. I'm just Mr. Amashi. I'm a human being. Um, log 1.5, that's going to be 0.176. So log 1.5 approximately equals 1.7, sorry, 0.176. Okay, so how did I do this? Well, if you think about it, log 2 plus log 3, so this is the self-discovery. Could I take two of these values here, these values right here, could I take two of those values and combine them in such a way to get 0.778? And actually, I could. What if I added log 2 and log 3? 0 0.301 plus 0 0.477. That equals 0 0.778. So what does that mean? If we think about it, I know 2 times 3 is 6, right? You see a 2 and a 3 here, and a 6 there. So that tells me something. It tells me that log 2 plus log 3 is not equal to log 6, since logs, if you actually were to punch this in your calculator, log 6, you would find that it is actually 0 0.778. And of course, if I add log 2 and log 3, I also get 0 0.778. So that tells me that both of these um, logs here, when they're added up, equals the log of their product. So this is called the product property of logs. If you have log of any base, of x plus log of any base of y equal log of that same base of x times y. So that's the product property of logs. Um, and it doesn't matter what base you use, but as long as all the bases are the same, if you have two logs being added, you can condense as a single log of the product of x and y. Let's look at the other one. Let's look at log 1.5. So I told you I think that's going to be 0.176. Looking up here, <coughs> okay, you have log 2 and log 3, and we have log 4. Is there a way I can get 0.176 by combining these, by maybe multiplying, adding, subtracting, dividing? So take some time to think about it. Maybe pause the video. Take some time to think about it. Is there a way you can combine these to get 0.176. If you said log 3 minus log 2, you're 100% correct. Because if I did log 3 minus log 2, that's 0.477 and 0.301, which reduces to 0.176. Or uh, gets us 0.176. So if you think about it, okay. I know that 3 divided by 2 equals 1.5. So that means if I have log 3 minus log 2, which I now know equals log of 1.5, if 
if you're subtracting two logs, it's the same thing as dividing the two numbers I'm taking the log of. So this brings me to the next property called the quotient property of logs. So log of some base x minus log of some base y equals log of some base of x over y. So that's also another property we have to use. But again, if you calculate log 3 and log 2, and also even calculate log 1.5, you would see that log 3 minus log 2 equals log 1.5. And the reason why that's true is because of the quotient property of logs. So it's kind of a cool little thing there. And the last thing, log 16. We know log 16 is 1.204. Now, is there a way I can get 1.204 from these three numbers here? There's actually a few ways you could do it. If some of you said, what if I took this and multiply that by 2? That would get you 1.204. Uh, so that's interesting. Because 2 times log 4 will equal 1.204. Now if we think about it, what would you do to 4 to get 16? How can you combine 4 and 2 to get 16? I do know that 4 squared equals 16, right? So, if you think about it, 2 times log 4 equals log 16. 2 times log 4 equals log 4 squared. So this is, brings me to the next property. the power property of logs. So, in this case, if you have a number, which I'll call n of some lo uh, log of some base of x, it's going to equal that. So whenever you have a log of something raised to a power, you can almost roll that exponent to the front of the log. So it rolls along the log. Uh, no pun intended. But yeah, that's what we have there. Or you can bring it back if you want to move the n to the front. So those are the three properties of logs. The product property, if you have two separate logs being added together, it will equal the log of the product of those two numbers, x and y. If you have two separate logs being subtracted, it will equal the log of their quotient of those two numbers, x and y. And if you have a single log being multiplied by something to the left of it, you can move that number and make an exponent, or the other way around. If you have log of something raised to some power, you can take the exponent and roll it back to the front. So these are three properties that will be very powerful. Uh, well, I'm just the puns are just rolling right now because <laughs> we have the power property, but it can be very useful for um, solving equations, which we'll do later next week. Uh, also, be careful to not mix these up. There's uh, ways you can make mistakes. Uh, actually, I will show you the way you can make mistakes with these in class. I'm not going to show you the mistakes right now because I don't want to confuse you. But we'll see just do two examples, and I'll be done for today. Because I need to start getting ready for uh, the big football game. So, let's say I ask you to do the following. I ask you to expand log base 6 of 5x cubed over y. This, by the way, is example 2 on page 408. Page 508, sorry. So, if I want to expand, well, here's the thing. I see two things being divided, right? 5x cubed and y. So I use the quotient property. Then I see two things being multiplied, 5 times x cubed 
Remember, you gotta use base 6 for all your logs here. So I used the product property. And lastly, I can move the 3 to the front. And that's the power property. So this is a full expansion. Sometimes we may want to do this for some problems, um, but it's not going to be as prevalent as the second example. The uh, second example will be a little more useful, but sometimes it might make sense to expand, so it's good to know how to do that using the properties. So for number two, let's do the opposite. Let's condense a logarithmic expression. Let's say a log nine. plus 3 log 2 minus log 3. So condense as a single log. So I'll be more clear about this. And this is example 3, also on page 508. Okay. So right now I see a number being multiplied to log. So let's roll that back. Roll along the log. So I'm using the power property. So I'm kind of going backwards, right? And of course I know that's log 8. 2 cubes 8. Okay. I see two logs being multiplied. Let's use the product property. So I can condense that as 72, because I know 9 times 8 is... 72. So I just multiply these two together. And lastly, let's talk about ah, the quotient property. Because you see two logs being subtracted. So I could do that, which is log of 24. So now we've condensed it as a single log. So, pretty simple. Um, so, again, I'm not going to talk about the way you can make mistakes with this, but uh, I will um, have you guys try a few problems. I'll make a Google Docs sync really quick. And uh, that's it. So, uh, we're done with the video, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. I uh, may do a pop quiz on block number one. Actually, I'm uh, just kidding. There'll be no pop quiz. It wouldn't really be a surprise quiz if I just told you that. So don't worry, no quiz. But I'm just going to do a couple questions on um, Google Docs. So just uh, click on that link. Go 49ers. Prediction 27-24. San Francisco will win. So if you're watching the game, enjoy it. If you got some other things going on, enjoy that, and I'll see you uh, in a few days.